Hello, Falja. Welcome to another reading of the Tawn Bo Coolnia, the Cattle Raid of Cooley, with myself, Laura O'Brien. And when last we left our heroes, they were fighting in a ford. This is uh, Ferdia and Cú Cullen, the uh, brothers, possibly lovers. And we are going to just dive right in because Ferdia had told Cú Cullen, let me just sorry, we are doing a reading of the Tombo Gulnia with um, the English translation by Joseph Dunn from 1914. And if this is your first look at the videos, please, please, please go back to the playlist and start at the start because we are on episode 20 over here. So we've done a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So um, we had left the combat of Ferdia and Cucullan after I think 43 minutes was the last video. So I don't know how long it's gonna take us to finish it now today. Uh, we had left Ferdia saying Cú Cullen um, was not to think of their friendship anymore um, because it, it was doing them no good, basically. So we're just gonna dive right back in. Too long are we now in this way, quoth Ferdia, and what arms shall we resort to today? O Cú Cullen. With thee is thy choice of weapons this day, answered Cucullan, for thou art he that first didst reach the ford. Rememberest thou at all, asked Ferdia, the choice deeds of arms we were wont to practice with Skahok and with Uahok and with Aoife? Indeed, I do remember, asked Cucullan. If thou rememberest, let us begin with them. They betook them to their choicest deeds of arms. They took upon them two equally matched shields for feats, and their eight-edged targes for feats, and their eight small darts, and their eight straight swords with ornaments of walrus tooth, and their eight lesser ivoried spears, which flew from them and to them like bees on a day of fine weather. They cast no weapon that struck not. Each of them was busy casting at the other with those missiles from morning's early twilight till noon at midday, and while they overcame their various feats with the bosses and hollows of their feet shields, However great the excellence of the throwing on either side, equally great was the excellence of the defence, so that during all that time neither of them bled or reddened the other. Let us cease now from this bout of arms, O Cucullan, said Ferdia, for it is not by such our decision will come. Yea, surely, yea, surely, this is, yea, surely, let us cease, if the time hath come, answered Cucullan. They then ceased. They threw their feet tackle from them into the hands of their charioteers. To what weapons shall we resort next, O Cucullan? asked Ferdia. Sorry for the mic issues there. Um, yeah, so what weapons are we going to go? So they've tried the Skahok and Aoife and Uahok. Um, Aoife and Uahok are Skahok's daughters, by the way. And um, Aoife was the mother of Cucullan's son. Uh, he left her with child and that's the son that he murdered. So don't be giving me, yeah, Cucullan is the best. I get a lot of that in the comments and like, fuck you, to be honest. Um, he's really not. None of them are. I mean, this whole, the Tombo Cunha is just a whole um, lesson in what not to do and how not to do it, basically. So, you know, don't be thinking that we're here to be bigging up the boy, ugly little monster turd. So um, to what weapons shall we resort next? Oh, Cucullan asked Ferdia. Thine is the choice of weapons till nightfall, required Cucullin, replied Cucullin, for thou art he that didst first reach the ford. Let us begin then, said Ferdia, with our straight cut, smooth hardened throwing spears, with cords of full hard flax on them. Aye, let us begin then, assented Cucullin. Then they took on them two hard shields, equally strong. They fell to their straight cut, smooth hardened spears, with cords of full hard flax on them. Um, flax is a type of plant. Um, you may have heard of flax seeds and you can get fibres out of the flax and so that would be cords wrapped around the handles probably of the spears for good grip. Um, so each of them was engaged in casting at the other with the spears from the middle of noon till the hour of evening sundown. However great the excellence of the defence, equally great was the excellence of the throwing on either side, so that each of them bled and reddened, 
and wounded the other during that time. So they're equally matched again. Let us leave off from this now, O oh, Cucullin, said Ferdia. I let us leave off if the time hath come, answered Cucullin. So they ceased. They threw their arms from them into the hands of their charioteers. Thereupon, each of them went toward the other in the middle of the ford, and each of them put his hand on the other's neck and gave him three kisses. Their horses were in one and the same paddock that night, and their charioteers at one and the same fire. And their charioteers made ready a litter bed of fresh rushes for them with pillows for wounded men on them. Then came healing and curing folk to heal and cure them, and they laid healing herbs and grasses and a curing charm on their cuts and stabs, their gashes and many wounds. Of every healing herb and grass and curing charm that was brought and was applied to the cuts and stabs, to the gashes and many wounds of Cucullin, a like portion thereof he sent across the ford westward to Ferdia, so that the men of Erin should not have it to say that should Ferdia fall at his hands, it was more than his share of care had been given to him. So Cucullin is sending all this stuff over to Ferdia, but it's for the look of the thing, um, or that's how it's being portrayed anyway, that it's not that he cares so much about Ferdia, it's that um, nobody would, he, he wouldn't let it be said basically that he didn't, um, that if Ferdia fell, that it wasn't because Cuchulain had given him proper care or ha Cuchulain had gotten more care than Ferdia to heal him in between. Of every food and of every savoury, soothing and strong drink that was brought by the men of Air and of Ferdia, a like portion thereof he sent over the ford northwards to Cuchulain, for the purveyors of Ferdia were more numerous than the purveyors of Cuchulain. All the men of Erin were purveyors to Ferdia, to the end that he might keep Cuchulain off from them, but only the inhabitants of Mac Bregg, the plain of Bregg, were purveyors to Cuchulain. They were wont to come daily, that is, every night to converse with him. So that is an interesting one as well. So when um, when Ferdia gets the, the food and the drinks that are coming, um, he's getting a lot of gifts and a lot of uh, care from the men of Erin because he's, you know, save us Ferdia, your only hope. Um, and he sees that as an imbalance. So that's why he's sending stuff over to Cucullin. So those, those motivations are quite different there. Um, in that Cucullin's all about the look of the thing and Ferdia genuinely sees it as, as an unfair thing that he's getting more than Cucullin. They bided there that night. Early on the morrow they arose and went their ways to the fort of combat. To what weapons shall we resort on this day, O Ferdia, asked Cucullin. Thine is the choosing of weapons, Ferdia made answer, because it was I had my choice of weapons on the day of foregone. Let us take then, said Cucullin, to our great well-tempered lances today, for we think that the thrusting will bring nearer the de de decisive battle today than did the casting of yesterday. Let our horses be brought to us and our chariots yoked to the end that we engage in combat over our horses and chariots on this day. Aye, let us go so, Ferdy assented. Thereupon they girded two full firm broad shields on them for that day. They took to their great well-tempered lances that day. Either of them began to pierce and to drive, to throw and to press down the other, from early morning's twilight till the hour of evening's close. If it were the want for birds in flight to fly through the bodies of men, they could have passed through their bodies on that day and carried away pieces of blood and flesh through their wounds and their sores into the clouds and the air all around them. That is an evocative piece of imagery right there. And when the hour of the evening's close was come, their horses were spent and their drivers were wearied, and they themselves, the heroes and warriors of valour, were exhausted. Let us give over now, O Ferdia, said Cucullin, for our horses are spent and our drivers tired, and when they are exhausted, we sh why should we too not be exhausted? And in this wise he spake, and he uttered these words at that place. We need not our chariots break, this a struggle fit for giants, Place the hobbles on the steeds, now that din of arms is o'er. Yea, we will cease if the time hath come, replied Ferdia. They cease then. They threw their arms away from them into the hands of their charioteers. Each of them came towards his fellow. Each laid his hand on the other's neck and gave him three kisses. Their horses were in the, the one pen that night and their charioteers at the one fire. 
Their charioteers prepared two litter beds of fresh rushes for them with pillows for wounded men on them. The curing and healing men came to attend and watch and mark them that night, for naught else could they do. Because of the direfulness of their cuts and their stabs, their gashes and their numerous wounds, would apply to them filters and spells and charms to staunch their blood and their bleeding and their deadly pains. Of every magic potion and every spell and every charm that was applied to the cuts and stabs of Cucullan, their like share he sent over the ford westwards to Ferdia. Of every food and every savoury, soothing and strong drink that was brought by the men of Erin to Ferdia, an equal portion he sent over the ford northwards to Cucullan, for the victuallers of Ferdia were more numerous than the victuallers of Cucullan. For all the men of Erin were Ferdia's nourishers, to the end that he might ward off Cucullan for them, but the indwellers of the plain of Bragg alone were Cucullan's nourishers. They were wont to come daily, that is, every night to converse with him. And yes, that is a repetition of the previous night. Um, you do get a lot of repetition um, as we go through, especially long texts like this. And I think part of that is to uh, for memory devices for oral storytelling. Um, but part of it is just um, it's it's just how the stories were being told. So they abode there that night. Early on the morrow they arose and repaired to the ford of combat. Cucullin marked an evil mien and a dark mood that day on Ferdia. It is evil thou appearest today, O Ferdia, spake Cucullin. Thy hair has become dark today, and thine eye has gone drowsy, grown drowsy, and thine upright form and thy features and thy gait have gone from thee. Truly not for fear nor for dread of thee is that happened to me today, answered Ferdia. For there is not in air in this day a warrior I could not repel. And Cucullin lamented and moaned, and he spake these words, and Ferdia responded. Cucullin, Ferdia, ah, if it be thou, well, I know thou art doomed to die. To have thou gone at woman's hest, forced to fight thy comrade's scorn. Ferdia, O Cucullin, wise decree, loyal champion, hero true. Each man is constrained to go neat the sod that hides his grave. Cucullin, Finnevar, Maeve's daughter fair, stately maiden though she be, not for love they'll give to thee, but to prove thy kingly might. Ferdia, proved was my might long since, coup of gentle spirit thou. Of one braver I've not heard, till today I have not found. Cucullin, uh, thou art he provoked this fight, son of Damon, Dare's son, to have gone at woman's word, swords to cross with thine old friend. Cucullin's really salty about this woman's word thing. Um, Ferdia, should we then unfought depart, brothers though we are, bold hound, ill would be my word and fame with Alil and Cruachan's maeve. Uh, Cucullin, food has not yet passed his lips, nay, nor has he yet been born, Son of king or blameless queen, for whom I would work thee harm. Ferdia, Cullen's hound with floods of deeds, Maeve not thou hath us betrayed. Fame and victory thou shalt have, not on thee we lay our fault. So Cucullin is, is really like, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm messing saying he's a bit salty, but he does seem to be genuinely hurt that Ferdia would betray him. Um, for you know, for somebody that he doesn't especially care about, um, or as as Cucullin would see it, owe anything to. So, um, and Ferdy is kind of plumosing him a little bit, saying, um, you know, like this is this is all Maeve's fault. This is not your fault. So don't worry about it. You know, Cucullin clotted. Cucullin says, Clotted gore is my brave heart, near I'm parted from my soul. Wrongful tis with hosts of deeds, Ferdia dear to fight with thee. Really feeling it. How much soever thou findest fault with me today, said Ferdia, it will be as an offset to my prowess. And he said, to what weapons shall we resort today? With thyself is the choice of weapons today, replied Cucullin, for it is I that chose on the day gone by. Let us resort then, said Ferdia, to our heavy, hard-smiting swords this day, for we trow that the smiting each other will bring us nearer to the decision of battle today than was our piercing each other on yesterday. 
Let us go then, by all means, responded Cuchulain. Then they took two full length, full, <laughs> sorry. Then they took two full great long shields upon them for that day. They turned to their heavy, hard smiting swords. Each of them fell to strike and to hew, to lay low and cut down, to slay and undo his fellow till as large as the head of a month old child was each lump and each cut that each of them took from the shoulders and thighs and shoulder blades of the other. So the wounds every day are getting uh, deeper and gorier um, as we progress. Each of them was engaged in smiting the other in this way from the twilight of early morning till the hour of evening's close. Let us leave off from this now, O Cuchulain, cried Ferdia. Aye, let us leave off if the hour has come, said Cuchulain. They parted then and threw their arms away from them into the hands of their charioteers. Though it had been the meeting of two happy, blithe, cheerful, joyful men, their parting that night was of two that were sad, sorrowful and full of suffering. Their horses were not in the same paddock that night. Their charioteers were not at the same fire. They passed there that night. It was then that Ferdia arose early on the morrow and went alone to the ford of combat, for he knew that that would be the decisive day of battle and combat and he knew that one or other of them would fall there that day or that they both would fall it was then he donned his battle weeds of battle and fight and combat or ever cuchulain came to meet him then he donned his battle weed of battle and fight and combat or ever cuchulain came to meet him i don't understand that sentence i don't know what battle weed is wondering is it some kind of drug but I don't I genuinely don't know um he's putting it on him rather than taking it into him so maybe not and this was the manner of this maybe read on Laura and you might get more okay and this was the manner of this harness of battle and fight and combat he put his silken glossy trues with its border of speckled gold next to his white skin over this outside he put his brown leather well-sewn kilt Outside of this, he put a huge goodly flag the size of a millstone. He put his solid, very deep iron kilt of twice mol molten iron over the huge goodly flag as large as a millstone, through fear and dread of the gay bulga that day. So the gay bulga is Cuchulain's spear, his magic spear. And uh, there's definitely some foreshadowing here, no spoilers. Um, so his battle weed of battle and fight and combat is his his dress, I presume, um, before Cuchulain came to meet him. So he, he got himself kitted up with uh, what's what's effectively armour. Um, the, the flag the size of a millstone um, would be a large flat piece of uh, something. Leather, iron. No, the iron kilt goes over that. So um, I'm not sure what the goodly flag is, but uh, uh, materials wise, but it's obviously he's layering up um, with uh, effectively armor for this day's battle. About his head, he put his crested war cap of battle and fight and combat, where on were 40 carbuncle gems beautifully adorning it and studded with red enamel and crystal and rubies and with shining stones of the Eastern world. His angry, fierce striking spear he seized in his right hand. On his left side he hung his carved battle falchion with its golden pommel and its rounded hilt of red gold. On the arch slope of his back he slung his massive fine buffalo shield of a warrior whereon were 50 bosses wherein a boar could be shown in each of its bosses. That's pretty huge. Apart from the great central boss of red gold Ferdia performed diverse, brilliant, manifold, marvellous feats on high that day, unlearned from anyone before, neither from foster mother nor from foster father, neither from Skahok nor from Uahok nor from Aoife, but he found them of himself that day in the face of Cuchulain. So that's interesting, um, his diverse, brilliant, manifold, marvellous feats. Um, that were coming to him intuitively, basically, or from his, his own kind of skill and mastery that he hadn't been taught. Cuchulain likewise came to the ford and he beheld the various brilliant, manifold, wonderful feats that Ferdia performed on high. 
Thou seest yonder, O Lake, my master, the diverse, bright, numerous, marvellous feats that Ferdia performs on high. I think he's on high. Um, and I shall receive yon feats one after the other. And therefore, if defeat be my lot this day, do thou prick me on and taunt me and speak evil to me, so that the more my spirit and anger shall rise in me. If, however, before me his defeat takes place, say thou so to me and praise me and speak me fair to the end that the greater may be my courage. It shall surely be done so, if need be, O Kukuk, Leg answered. So Leg again is being put into this role and function of either kind of goading him on or, you know, inspiring confidence or bravery in him. And we've seen that a couple of times actually through the text. So Lake his, is his, not just his charioteer, but his, his mentor and his friend. Um, and he knows him well. He knows how to, how to get the rise out of him, definitely. Then Ku Cullen too girded his war harness of battle and fight and combat about him and performed all kinds of splendid, manifold, marvellous feats on high that day, which he had not learned from anyone before, neither with Skahok, nor with Uohok, nor with Aoife. Not to be outdone. Uh, Ferdia observed these feats and he knew they would be plied against him in turn. To what weapons shall we resort today, Ferdia? asked Ku Cullen. With thee is thy choice of weapons, Ferdia responded. Let us go to the feet of the ford then, said Cucullin. Aye, let us do so, answered Ferdia. Albeit Ferdia spoke that he deemed it the most grievous thing whereto he could go, for he knew that in that sort Cucullin used to destroy every hero and every battle soldier who fought with him in the feet of the ford. Oh my God, this is so long. Okay, in the feet of the fort. We are going to leave that there today. Um, I'm going to stop this video and maybe do another recording actually straight away and try and get it finished, but I just need a little break. So um, we will stop it there and I will make sure that, um, that this gets finished in my next recording, okay? So thank you very much for your time and your attention as ever and Slonga Fall and I will see you in the next video.